Shalom, I'm Laura Justman, and uh, Rabbi Barkley has asked me if I could share my recipe for making challah. Uh, give us something creative to do while we're all uh, spending so much time at home. And whether you're an uh, expert at making bread or you've never made bread before, this is the perfect recipe. It's very easy. The dough is very forgiving and very few ingredients. The only equipment you'll need is a stand mixer with a dough hook, or you can use a food processor with the plastic bread hook, uh, blade. If you don't have that, then you just have to use your hands. So the other ingredients are a cup of warm water, two lightly beaten eggs, four tablespoons of vegetable oil, you can use butter if you don't if you're having a dairy meal. Two tablespoons of salt. I like to use sea salt, and two and a quarter teaspoons of yeast, and four and a half cups of flour. Now, mostly bread flour, which you may have a hard time finding now. But I like to use uh, Red Mill artisan bread flour or King Arthur uh, bread flour. This happens to be all purpose. I didn't have one that's bread flour, but it'll be in a blue package. Um, and uh, some kind of sweetener, uh, two tablespoons, three tablespoons of honey or sugar, regular sugar. And a good, a good place to uh, have a warm place for your dough to rise is just in an oven with the light turned on. Just check it to make sure it's not getting too warm. You can turn the light off and, leave, and continue to leave it in the oven to rise. So let's get started. The first thing you'll want to do is add the warm water to whatever bowl you're going to mix it in. Let the, and add the yeast and let it sit for five minutes. After the five minutes, you'll see that it is slightly foaming and that means the yeast is alive and well. It's exactly what you wanna see. Another reason why this recipe is so easy is you just dump everything in at once and let the mixer uh, do its job. As you can see, I've added everything into the bowl and we are going to start mixing. You'll want to start it uh, at on level one or low so the flour doesn't go spraying everywhere and then you can increase it to two. Uh -huh. You can help it along to get incorporated with a spatula. And you can increase it to four to get it going. You'll be able to tell the right consistency. If it's too dry, you add more water. If it's too sticky, you'll add a little more flour in small increments. After five or six minutes, the dough should be soft, elastic, and not sticking to the sides of the bowl. And you'll want it, you can feel how soft and stretchy it is, but not sticky. So at this point, you wanna take it out of the machine and put it on the countertop. And what also is good about this recipe is you don't need any flour. It will not stick to your countertop. Knead it by hand for a minute and form it into a ball. Then place it into your oiled bowl and then turn it over so that the top side has oil on it. And then cover it with plastic and place in your warm oven. 
you'll want to let it rise until it's double in size. And check your oven temperature. If you feel it's getting too warm, turn the light off. And we will come back and check this in an hour and a half. So this was after an hour and 20 minutes. You want to check to see the how much it's increased as it's rising. Uh, your oven may be warmer and it might take less time. So this was an hour and 20 minutes. The next step is to take it out of the bowl and we're going to start the shaping process, which is probably the hardest part of this entire recipe. You can have three strands, four strands, six strands. Six strands is the classic shape. It has more height and volume. After removing from the bowl, I put it out onto the counter, flattened it out, and divided it into six equal pieces. You can do that with a serrated knife or a bench scraper. Makes it really easy to cut through the dough. Then you're gonna to wanna to take each piece and roll it into a, a uniform smooth ball. To do that, you will just take your hand, fold it over, and bring the sides in, turn it over, and then just roll it in your hand, pull it towards you until it forms a nice smooth ball. It's easier to use two hands if you're not trying to videotape at the same time. So I've done two and I'm gonna do the rest. The next step is to form them into the strands and you'll do that by turning the ball over pressing it out to roughly a rectangular shape and fold it in thirds like a letter. And then you'll turn it over and with your hands, both hands, you roll it out until it's a long cylinder. And I'll do that with each piece. If you're having trouble rolling them out and you're meeting with some resistance, cover them with some plastic wrap and let them sit for five to six minutes. So here I have my six strands rolled out. I'm going to pinch them together at the top. I know this is gonna sound confusing and I'm going to include a separate video that you can watch again and again to get an idea but you're always gonna have two strands at the top laid out and, <clears throat> excuse me, the other four will be going down. And this will always be the middle. So what you're going to do is, the first thing you're going to do is take this strand and fold it over and take this strand and fold it over. So it has a one fold at the top. So what you're gonna have is always the two pieces that are out to the side and the four in the middle. And you're always gonna take the last one, bring it over to the middle and bring the second to the right over. And now I have my, my two sides again. And you keep doing that, alternating the sides. I'm gonna bring this one, put it in the middle, and bring this one to the side. And then this one goes in the middle And the fourth one goes to the side. I'm sorry, that last one was not really clear, but this is what you end up with. So when you get to this point, you wanna take your knife or your bench scraper and cut off the ends. And this one. And you're going to pinch it together 
and tuck it under. And pinch it together and tuck it under. And then you're just gonna wanna shape the roll, tighten it, pull it together, roll it back and forth until you get a nice tight braid. At this point, you're gonna wanna transfer it to a baking sheet lined with parchment paper and sprayed with nonstick spray. Here I have one egg mixed with a couple teaspoons of water and we're going to brush it over the hollow. Make sure you get in all the nooks and crannies. And then we're, also, we're going to brush it again once it's done it's through with its final rise. We'll brush it again before we bake it. You wanna make sure you get everything covered, all the little nooks and crannies. It's easier to do it now before it rises the second time when it's a lot more delicate. So that looks good. I'm going to recover it with the plastic wrap that has been coated in a little cooking spray. Then we're gonna put it back in the warm oven for the second rise. The second rise will not take as long as the first. You don't want it to let it overproof. It'll puff up more when we bake it. I'm going to set the bottom oven to 375. Here's what it looks like after proofing for 45 minutes. Now we're ready to egg wash again, apply sesame seeds, and put it in the oven to bake. Here's what it looks like after the second egg wash and the sesame seeds. Now I will put it in the oven. You want to bake for 10 minutes, then turn it around so it bakes evenly. So after 10 minutes, I'm going to rotate the pan and let it bake for another 10 minutes. So here's the final product. It baked for ba basically 25 minutes. When baking bread, you know it's done if it has the right color and it sounds hollow underneath when you tap it. So I hope you enjoyed this unprofessional video. You want to immediately remove it to a cooling rack so it doesn't get soggy on the bottom. You need to let it completely cool before you try to slice it. Otherwise, the bread will just tear apart. I hope you enjoyed this unprofessional video.